everybody and welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be flipping through a new rule book from um, Osprey Games. This one's called The Doomed Apocalyptic Horror Hunting. Um, this one's done by Chris McDowell. The title of the book is Everything You Need to Know About What the Rule Set's All About. This book is a hardcover edition and the cover is very, very nice. Not a great cover, but it is quite nice. The design of the cover could have been much, much better, I think. While it's well executed, it feels also rather generic. Perhaps this was something in the design brief. I think there's a missed opportunity here, but perhaps that'll be more evident once my review is done. The cover is done by Halga Balzer. Uh, let's, look at, let's look inside. First up is the table of contents, then a very nice page to set up the book. Chapter 1 gets you in the right frame of mind for the rule set with some great questions like, uh, who are you? The question immediately puts you in the game. Then questions like, what is the game? Uh, this one reinforces the ideas behind the game, makes you, well, makes sure you, well, or the player knows what's in store. Then you got the kid bashing attitude, which I thought was really, really nice. I love the fact that this was in here because this is, after all, all very central to the game and to the hobby. It's nice that it's aware of that. Then uh, play to find out what happens. This is also a great rule to have in any game. Play to experience and not just to win. Embracing the craft uh, is the hobby part of the, of the game, which, is an, which gets a nice wave here. As we all will see later, many parts of this book gives you ideas on where to go with the figures uh, that you'll be building. Then they've got this thing here which I quite quite like. It's called a competitive collaboration, which um, I think this alone makes the game stand out over many of the other skirmish games out there at the moment. It's when during the game you realize that your foe could be your ally and cooperation while wielding a large stick is a great way to add some levels to the game. Very nice touch. Now this rule set can be played solo with your warband against the horrors, of course. You'll have to create an AI matrix or just follow what's in the book in addition to the response table that they all come with. Of course, that's a bit later. Um, now, let's just look at chapter two. Chapter two are the rules. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skim through the rules. The rules are very, very simple and can be picked up very quickly. There's just one only important stat for the most part of the game uh, as the engine. The value of this book is the amount of conflict you can play. It's the, um, the minimalist style, which I quite like. And it's a good pickup kind of game uh, for participation as well. Or if you want to do a participation game, it's pretty good if you're interested in that. Next chapter is the Warbands. Um, this chapter introduces the uh, factions. There are four factions here, which I thought was quite nice. These four factions are interesting enough to be given a brief. They've got a little nice brief visual theme uh, inspired sort of by the four seasons. Uh, this is also great because it means it implies a certain color palette, which is, which is quite helpful if you're painting. And it gives direction, yeah, if you're converting as well, or kit bashing. Uh, it also lets the, it's brief, but also lets the, the gamer's imagination run wild. You've got the different factions, um, Interior Court, Martyr Retinues, Reborn Covens, and Exile Bands, stuff like that. And you've got the rewards. You've got some sample bands here. Now, this is the, uh, this, were the, this, I think, is the uh, meat and potatoes part of the uh, game, if you ask me. This is the uh, campaigns. And the campaigns part is what makes this game really, really good. So a campaign is usually a, a, a compilation or a sequence of scenarios which lead to the end. And in this chapter, we talk about casualties. Uh, after the game, what happens to the casualties, the reward, the renown and rewards. Prestige, of course, you've definitely got to have prestige. Um, and then you've got this part, which I quite like. This one's uh, called the campaign world. Now you got the five dooms in this. Um, I'm not going to go through it. Get the book and have a read. Um, but these five dooms uh, are triggered by this thing called a doom track, which lead to world events. And these are the world event tables. And you know what? This actually adds a little level to the, to the game. If you ask me, it's, uh, it makes the game very, very flavorful, which is, again, which is quite sad why, um, you know, the cover's pretty generic when they seem to want to go to a, Want to have a particular vibe and particular world that you want to build? Yeah, that's that's just that is my my slight gripe. Next up, we got the scenarios. Um, yeah, scenario chapter. 
talks about different scenarios you can choose from. As you can see, it, it points you to different, different scenarios from different pages. And then you've got chapter six, which is the horrors. Here, they give you the little like uh, uh, area part where you can create your own horror, your own minions. Horrors all come with minions in this game, which is quite good and quite interesting. Um, and each of them have their a little bit of description. Uh, they've got a little bit of, um, you know, uh, the nexuses, which again, get the book and have a read. Nexus is a great idea. And as you can see over here, there are a lot of horrors. Uh, the horror page, the horror list starts at page 52 and ends at, a, at page 110. It's, 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 it's bulky. It's bulky. It's nice because uh, each of the um, each of the uh, horrors are slightly different. They've got their nexuses. They've got their nexus effects. Again, get the book, have a read. Um, they've got uh, things like a response table, which is which is great. You know, it helps with solo play. And they've got certain things like this, like for example over here, they've got certain rules for solo play, which is which is quite quite good, quite fantastic. Um, so in the in the game, you, because in the game you're not just playing against another opponent. But you're also playing against horrors, and these horrors are, I want to say they're they are designed, well designed elements of the game, and each of them had this little like um, um description, so you can actually like you know either make a, a horror according to what description you found, or find a, or have some if you have something on your table or your hobby table, you can actually like you know retrofit it back into the game, which I think is kind of cool, very very cool. Uh, all these uh, elements actually help. Elevate the Doom game from a generic skirmish game into a very flavorful and engaging game, if you ask me. Um, this is one of the reasons, uh, again, some world building or some background would have made this game or the, the rule book so much better, in my opinion. You know, you establish the universe, you establish the uh, sandbox that you can play in. Then you can keep coming back and like choosing stuff to take from this book. Um, this, the, the horrors here. Well, again, it helps because they, they are very, very aware the gamers want to get bash and they give you ideas on how to do it. And if the ideas don't come from the description, it can come from, you know, the response table or descriptions, you know, to know uh, what do they do and how to retrofit in there. I must add, though, some of the pictures in here are very, very nice. They, they I'm, I, there's too much to ask, but maybe they could have given us where they got the pieces from the, uh, from the kit bash from. Um, but the pictures are very, very nice. Again, you want to sell miniatures, put some nice figures. Simple as that. Next up, we got the conflict list. Now, conflicts are pretty much why you play the scenario uh, and your rewards and things you get from it. So as you can see here, um, it gives you a description of the battlefield, the deployment, the objectives. And again, they got like solo. If you're playing solo, the um, conflicts, the objectives, uh, the conflicts are different for solo play. And that's the cover right there. And as you can see, there's a lot of conflicts. Um, the conflicts start at page 112 and goes all the way to page 156. That's um, that's a whole lot of conflicts, which is great because, you know, it pretty much, pretty much oh, excuse me, gives you everything that you need to, to play. And it gives you, a, you know, a whole lot of condiments or added bits of, a bit of meat, you know, so to elevate uh, what could have been a uh, throwaway skirmish game into something something quite special. So yeah, as you can see, again, I must also add that um, the, the, the art in here is also quite good. It's not bad at all. It's really, really quite good. But again, I wish they, they, they gave us a, a, a sample of the, um, <laughs> the conversions or the kit bashing. Just, um, I, some, some of this do not look very familiar uh, to me. Perhaps I don't get out and buy that many strange miniatures. Yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm still flipping and there's still so many conflicts to go through. Uh, and then you got the campaign climaxes, which I think is great because um, after you've agreed that you're going to play maybe like five or six scenarios, you can say, okay, we're going to end, we're going to end this with a campaign climax. And you've got, you know, I want to say recommendations. I want to say what happens, events that happen uh, uh, at the end of, um, of a uh, at the end of a campaign. So you got the normal climaxes, you know, and they even like, you know, like for example over here, you know, solo, if you're playing solo, these are the things. And then you've got Doom horror or Doom climaxes. You got the Doom horrors. All these are nice. It's it definitely adds 
adds to making the game so much better. This 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 game, this rule book is filled with tables, reaction tables, and I think that's great because if anything, it um it gives you that variety. Something something that while lets you play around and have um a goal with your with your imagination running well, but also keeps it quite tight. Like here are uh, what we recommend or uh, you know things to be. You can later add on if you like. And then you got the quick reference page just to go through everything. Hang the battle and then uh, credits. So well done, Chris Mc McDowell. Uh well done, Helga Balzer and Al uh, Anna Polatska. Oh my god, I hope I said that right. So the credits. That's pretty much the end of the book. The um the final book. The, it's a hardcover, Osprey Games. So so what are my thoughts? Um I love the books that are coming out of Osprey Games at the moment. I love how they are pushing the uh hobbying part of the hobby by stressing the uh miniature agnostic games or the miniature miniature agnostic aspects. I like that. Um, I think the title is great. Um, it's extremely evocative, and for me, it was an exciting proposition. You know, who would I want to play in an apocalyptic? Yes, horror. Yes, hunting. Yeah, I mean, it tells you what it tells you everything. Um, the book feels like it's a very good quality. Uh, it's a good quality product, and it looks like the the rules are well. They promise a lot of fun. Um, what did I wish the book had, perhaps? Um, I wish the book answered questions like, uh, why are the factions hunting the horrors? You know, why are this, but why these particular four factions? Why, um, where did the horrors come from? Stuff like that. It's mostly background stuff because I think, again, I think the background is what's missing. Uh, the book has such, I think it's, um, it has such a, an opportunity to build a universe that, you know the makers can keep going back to for content and because of how the book is written and you know it's it seems like they 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 avoided that they have many specific names specific horrors but it doesn't feel like it's a part of a, 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 a experience it feels like it's disjointed slightly maybe the uh that wasn't a design maybe that was in the design brief i think they could have made something a little bit more Special if uh, they set in a particular world as a solid base and then uh, let the book branch out to offer possibilities. I don't know, it's just, it's, just, uh, it's just my two cents or my two dice worth. But finally, it's, it's a really great book. It's a really great book and I would highly recommend it. Um, I would highly recommend hobbyists to get this. Um, there are guys who, you know, like um, hobbying, like do kid bashing and want to go through, you know, thick books. Um, no, a lot of rules. Take this one. It's really, really simple. Like, so if you like this flip throughs, uh, give me a like, give me a subscribe for encouragement. We have a buy me a coffee. So if you want to contribute something, you can. And finally, don't forget to enjoy painting your favorites.